All right, let's look at the next section of homework. We talked about um, we talked about in a video the first section how to find the how to find the domain and how to use limits to describe the behavior close to the values excluded from the domain. So now let's talk about how to do the next section, which says describe how the graph of the given function can be obtained by transforming the graph of the reciprocal function g of x equals 1 over x. And then it actually tells us also to do um, some more stuff, but let's see. Identify the horizontal and vertical asymptotes and use limits to describe the corresponding behavior. Sketch the graph of the function. So let's talk about if I have a problem like number 8, which you don't have to do, which is why I picked it. Uh, what I can do to put this basically into a form that tells me the transformations. So right now, it's not telling me much of anything, but there's a pretty simple way to get it to tell us exactly what's going on, and to do that we're going to use long division. Okay, long division, our favorite thing in the world. I want to take the bottom of the fraction and divide it into the top of the fraction. So I'm going to say, well, how much, what do I have to multiply x by to get 3x? I would have to multiply it by 3. Then I have to distribute the 3 back to both parts of this. Okay, but then basically I'm subtracting what this is. Okay, which means that I'm going to have a minus 3x and a plus 3 when I actually work it out. Okay, so the first part cancels out, 3x minus 3x, negative 2 plus 3 gives me 1, which means my remainder is 1. So the form of this that's actually going to be more helpful to me is if I write it as 3 plus, because my 1 is positive, 1 over x minus 1. Okay, 3 plus 1 over x minus 1, because now I have a function right here that looks like the reciprocal function. Okay, the reciprocal function is 1 over x. Okay, so now we need to think about to describe our transformation. What am I doing to this? No, sorry. What am I doing to this to make it look like this? Okay, so we're talking about vertical stretches and shrinks. We're talking about reflections. We're talking about uh, vertical and horizontal shifts. Okay, this 3 out to the front, I am adding 3 to my function. Okay, if I'm adding 3 to my function, that is a shift of up 3. Okay, so if I have a number out to the side here, it's adding or it's making me go either up or down, depending on if it's positive or negative. Now, the next thing is if this was a negative, then I would be reflecting on the x-axis. It's not, so I'm not reflecting on the x-axis. If I had a number on top here that wasn't 1, then this would probably be a vertical stretch. Like, if I had if I had a number like 5 on top, that's a vertical stretch. If I somehow managed to get a number like 1 third on top, then that would be a vertical shrink, because it's a fraction. But whatever's on top here is telling me about vertically, am I stretching or am I shrinking? but this is just a 1, so nothing's happening there. On the bottom, I am taking x and subtracting 1, and this is like inside of my function. Okay, if we think about whenever I have vertex form of something, and I do this, the minus 1 is inside my function because it's being squared. This is the same thing, that it's inside my function because it's on the bottom of my fraction. So this is the opposite of what we would think it is. So it's right 1. Okay, a minus 1 means right 1. Okay, so this only really has two transformations to it. Which, like I said, if we had looked at like the very first equation we had, there's pretty much no way that we could have gotten that from the original equation. We might have been able to get the, the right 1 part because the bottom of the fraction when we divide is always going to be end up being here on the reciprocal of what we got, but the up 3 um, we couldn't have necessarily gotten from our original function. So it asks us next to identify the horizontal and vertical asymptotes and use limits to describe the corresponding behavior. 
Okay, well, we can look at back at the original function for that. That's probably the most helpful place. We can probably also look at um, what we just did. Either one would probably give us a good look. But the vertical asymptotes for this happen where the bottom of my fraction equals 0, which is at x equals 1. So my vertical asymptote is at x equals 1. Okay, my horizontal asymptote has to do with the degree on the top and the bottom of my fraction. On top I have x to the first, on bottom I have x to the first. Since they're the same, my horizontal asymptote happens at y equals the fraction that I get from my leading coefficients. So my horizontal asymptote happens at y equals 3 over 1, which is just 3. Okay, if we look back at what our transformed graph was, um, that plus 3 out in the front is going to tell us what the horizontal asymptote is as well. Because if this is a, a 3 without an x, then that means that I'm moving my graph up 3. So normally, it would be our asymptote would be at y equals 0. We're moving it up 3, so now it's at y equals 3. Okay, then it wants us to describe the... Uh, vertical asymptote with limits where that's where we'd say well the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive direction of 3x minus 2 over x minus 1 so if I'm talking about values that are just a little bit above 1 like 1.01 then on the top here 3 times something just above 1 gives me about 3 minus 2 would give me 1. On the bottom, 1.01 .01 would give me 1.01 .01 minus 1, which is 0 0.01. Okay, what I care about here is that I have a positive number. Okay, and so I know the closer and closer I get to 1, the more zeros I'm adding to what I plug in. And so this is going to be a bigger and bigger number, and it will be positive. Okay, so the limit of this as we approach from the positive side is positive infinity. Then the limit as I approach the limit of x as I approach 1 from the negative direction of my function. Okay, same kind of thing. Now if I plug in like 0.99. 3 times 0.99 is going to be a little bit less than 3, but it's still going to be bigger than what this is. Okay, so I'm still going to have a positive on top, but on the bottom, 0.99 minus 1 gives me a negative number on the bottom. So a positive over a negative is a negative, and I'm going to get bigger and bigger numbers, so that's negative infinity. Now, with all of this information, I'm ready to sketch my graph. Okay, so we're going to talk about using the transformations we found and also using those limits that we just did. And our sketch doesn't have to be like terribly accurate, but like our vertical asymptote is at 1, so we need to make sure to put that. Our horizontal asymptote is at 3, so let's put that. And then our reciprocal function basically happens in like two of our corners, okay? And so this is where the flip comes in that like, because we said there wasn't a flip, we should be in this corner and this corner. And the way you can tell that for sure is two ways. We can say, well, the limit as I approached one from the positive direction, I was going up to positive infinity, which means that I have a graph like this that's going up towards positive infinity. Okay, and as I approached from the negative direction, I got negative infinity. Well, as I approached my graph from this direction, I need to be going down. So that's going to happen this way. The other way you can do it is you can actually plug in some values like that are next to your asymptote, your vertical asymptote. Like if you plug in 2 to your function, you'd get 3 times 2, which is 6, minus 2 is 4 on top, and then 2 minus 1 on bottom, which is 1. So 4 over 1 would be 4. So 2 comma 4, 
hey, look, we got pretty close there, is a correct value. Then we could plug in 0 and say, okay, that gives me negative 2 over negative 1, which is positive 1. So I was a little off here. So, like, that would be a point. Okay. But like I said, your graph doesn't have to be, like, unbelievably accurate. It just needs to show that you know where your asymptotes are and you know which corners um, or which sections of, of the graph your graph is actually in. Okay? So that's how to do problems like 7 through 10.